Welcome to the Trading Lounge and the Day Head Report. And uh, here we're looking at the S and P five hundred. And just to sort of recap, what we went through last week was that um, expected uh, A, B, and C correction here. This is on the two hour chart, and, um, and then we're looking for uh, the five waves up for uh, for wave one, and then the A, B, C correction back for wave two, and that should be followed by wave three to the upside. Uh, in that uh, move to the upside there that would be looking at this being up for wave a small wave one here and wave two retesting the 1510 sort of area through here and then climbing up through here so that's what we'll be looking forward to this week um, pretty much as long as the market stays above the medium level here the 1500 then that bias will uh, stay in play there is uh, a small catch uh, that this little a b c here may just be the a wave and we get a b wave and a c wave back here before we see a push up i don't think that's the case but um let's just see how how this plays out and uh this will be the same for uh, for the other markets as well, um, the US uh, 30, the Dow Jones, and this is just on a 30 minute chart here. So it's capturing that little five wave structure to the upside up for wave one and an ABC back for wave two and uh, then up for one and back for two and, and, and working higher. So, you know, uh, support on the 14, well, it's the arrival at the 14100 here will see some drift back and uh, eventually developing support on top of the uh, 14,100 is what you'd be looking for the, for the long trades, um, you know, and as long as it stays pretty much above the, you know, the 1400 or this sort of trend line through here, then we'll be, uh, we'll keep that uh, wave count in play. And um, that's the same for Europe as well. This is the FTSE here. I haven't labeled this, but you can count that wave quite easily there. You can see that obviously wave one and wave two is in this area here, wave uh, three here, wave four, wave five, then the A, the B and the C, then uh, making new highs here. We can see that that's up for one and back for two. The speed will three, four here, so there'll be a five up to the 6,400. Um, some type of little ABC correction across here and eventually finding support here and then to the upside. The Australian markets, the uh, uh, pretty much the same as well. It's uh, You need to navigate through the, um, the 5,100 here. The... Um, so yeah, look, we've just been counting it up from 5,000 through here and we're still going there. The wave four got a bit bit large through here. As mentioned, there is drag. Uh, the finance sector is up and uh, a few of the other sectors are up as well. That's fine. But the material sector is the drag because of the US dollar being higher. And we also expect the US dollar to trend higher as well. Um, and that will be putting more pressure on the material sector. When these tr the, Some of the markets that have been trending down, first of all, it started in, in the gold. Um, one of the reasons, obviously, would be the figures, um, you know, sort of consistently coming out of the US that have been sort of uh, better. Um, and so we watched that gold market move to the downside. And then we then we seen the Australian dollar start to move to the downside as well. And that's always been a bit of a leader as such. And we still expect the Australian dollar to go down further as well. Uh, then we've seen the base metals um, with copper in mind um, is trending to the downside as well. So, you know, as our market, you know, tries to push to the upside in following some of the positive things that are coming out of the world, there will be that base metals drag uh, there as well, which will get a little bit heavier as, um, as time goes on. Um, which does bring me to an important uh, point here with BHP. Now, this is uh, BHP in Australia here on a daily chart, and um, there's two sort of counts for for this, and uh, we've mentioned them before, and I just want to go over them because it's the beginning of the week, and um, so this move uh, to to the upside uh, through here, this would be um, at this stage here. This this is either uh, wave one here, and uh, or um, yeah, or basically uh, wave uh, A here as well in this particular case here. So this particular move that we've got going up through here, you know, we've had this we've had this big move down through here and so forth. Uh, so that's fine. This uh, this move we've got up here, we just got to be mindful of the two counts. That's all. So this move up here can be a corrective rally of that big bear market that's come down, and it could be an A and a B and a C wave up here for C wave. And the, and the C waves are always in five waves, and that's the five waves there. Or we can have an up for wave one and then uh, back for wave uh, two here as such. 
And then, of course, we've got five waves up, four wave uh, three here as such. And then this, would, if that's the case, then this would be a wave four here. Uh, this wave four here, as you know, is pulled back 38.2% of, uh, of, the, of the previous uh, um, retracement here, this 38.2%, or to the fourth, pulls back to the fourth wave one lesser degree. So, look, shortly this is going to pan out in this, in, in this scenario here. So, in both cases, we've got this move down through here. So, we will see a bounce in both wave counts here, um, the bearish move and also the what move to the upside. So, uh, we get a wave four. We can have um, uh, this because this wave four wouldn't be finished yet. So we'd have like an A and a B and a, and a C wave touching this trend line here and then moving up from that point there. Or it's going to fall out of bed at this point here and move down further. So just be mindful of that be and use this for the material sector in general as well. So it might be a time to be... Um, you know, a bit light on on uh, on on the trade on the position sizing uh, here until we can confirm that we've got this or or this here. So I know a lot of people in the material sector. So this is just a little junction that will uh, that will play out, and um, you know it could it may take two weeks to play out, but and we'll keep monitoring that as well. Alrighty, well let's have a look at the uh, material sector. So copper being uh, quite central to the material sector and, and the base metals as such. This is uh, the LME copper here and uh, a daily chart. And uh, uh, as you can see, we're working through this triangle pattern here. And we can see that there will be support um, on this trend line through here in, in due course. And this particular trend that we're, that we're tracking down through here on the American market that we watch, and obviously we watch the American market because it's the last closing price that will affect Australia on the opening. So looking at the American uh, copper market here, where uh, this is the new May contract through here. So this is all the information I've got on this. Um, but uh, you, you know that the wave count, we've been working uh, lower. Uh, this is it here. And um, yeah, so we've got wave four here coming down to wave five here um, of wave three. So there's still a bit more to come down through here, but obviously there's going to be some consolidation around the 350 here. This still looks like down for one, back for two, the third wave down the fourth wave. So we'll see another little low coming through here before we see another uh, bounce up there for wave four. So wave four will uh, should give us sort of three waves back up to the fourth wave of one lesser degree that it can go to. So we'll just sort of observe that. But, you know, when we were looking at BHP just a moment ago and uh, uh, we we're expecting a bounce for, for that, um, and this is where this bounce will come from, of course, and then we'll get the other bounce back down through here as well for wave uh, five here, um, and that would be wave C and BHP, and you can obviously take that through to other markets as well. Um, the other side of this is the, the gold market, and uh, everything's pretty much sort of on track through here at the moment. Um, if you're short from the retest of 1600, then uh, pretty much stay short. Uh, the, if you're looking to add to positions, we need that uh, 1572 as the retested uh, resistance there for that. Um, there, so it can get a bit more uh, sort of shaky within this area here. So you're going to have to give it room to move as such. Um, but we do expect that low there eventually to be uh, taken out. But wave fours can be a little bit tricky. They can be sideways patterns. But what we see so far is that this is a uh, uh, corrective wave here, and this is um, really shaping up to be quite a reasonable impulse wave. So we should see that uh, continue lower through here, so we can stay with that. Um, so weaker materials uh, still edging lower as such. Let's have a look at uh, FX as the um, US dollar uh, can move up even further, driving materials down lower. Okay, the platform that I was just explaining uh, things on uh, has uh, stopped. They, uh, they do work on the uh, platforms over the weekend, so it's just sort of conked out while I was doing the, uh, uh, the analysis here. The, um, the 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 euro uh, uh, is is the, the wave counts we have on the euro on on the website are on track to go lower as the this is the US dollar here on a weekly chart uh, to go higher and uh, the Australian dollar wave count as well the ending diagonal triangle 
uh, that's on our charts. You can be, pick that up from there. The only major change that we can see is the uh, is the US dollar uh, here, and this is a weekly chart here. So this is a possible change in in trend that we're actually sort of looking at uh, through here, uh, and we'll put this on the website soon. But um, just uh, just pointing out that um, we are tracking a five wave structure to the upside here that should come in on this weekly trend line resistance through here, and then looking at a three wave counter trend and then further up uh, in the US dollar, which is obviously going to put pressure on uh, the US stock market at, at that stage as well. So, um, yeah, so uh, I can't get it on, there on the intraday at the moment, but um, we've still got higher to go on the, um, on the US dollar and lower to go on the euro as well. So stay on that side of the market and um, enter the market on uh, failed retests of... Uh, of uh, certain uh, levels that uh, the closest largest number so to speak so alrighty we'll look um, sorry for that little sort of interruption and, and a short presentation uh, it just happens to be uh, on a Sunday uh, so uh, there you go but um, besides that everything's pretty much on track of what we're doing so um, yeah this uh, week we'll have a look at uh, to see if the uh, the S&P 500 and the Dow push higher and if that's the case then our robo trades that we've sort of been working on late last middle to late last week trying to get some long positions into the market and hold on to them without getting sort of stopped out um, we're looking forward to um, to adding to those if we get the confirmation that the market is uh, is, is continuing higher there um, but as I mentioned the US dollar here will obviously be putting pressure on uh, on, on the material sector alrighty well um, good morning and good luck